Hey, I'm Adam with Adam's Horror. Today is episode two of TIG Tuesday. Stay tuned. This here is the water I'll be using in this video. It's a Lincoln Electric Ranger 225 engine driven water. Now we've got this thing set up in its TIG mode with the stinger in electrode negative and the ground in electrode positive. I've got it set at roughly 125 amps. As you can see, I'm in the second tap setting and I'm at seven right there, which is somewhere in the range of 125 to maybe 130. So let's get started. So I've got a piece of two inch by quarter inch flat bar stock, ground clean about halfway down it. And this is where I'll be running the beads on with this scratch start rig off of this Lincoln Ranger 225. Uh, scratch start rig has a valve on the torch body you have to turn on instead of a gas solenoid in the welder. So you get that turned on before you strike an arc. And that way you have gas shielding. So I get in position and I strike the tungsten off the side of the uh, base metal. That initiates the arc on a scratch start rig. You don't have a high frequency box or anything like that. And I noticed after a couple beads my amperage was a little bit high. But it took a few runs to figure that's what it was. I run it where I normally run it at, but it was wasn't hot for some reason. But the method for striking this arc is you strike at the edge of the plate with the TIG torch, or you just strike the tungsten right on it. And then as you, to do your dab, you whip to the edge of the puddle with your torch, pull back, and add filler metal as you pull back. But you keep the filler metal within the gas shielding of that uh, gas lens there. I don't have a gas lens, it's a gas cup on this one, but keep it within the shielding and you whip out at the end of your bead. You'll get a little bit of oxide that you have to grind off if you want to tie back into that bead. And you have to hover the TIG torch over the edge so it maintains the gas shielding while the metal cools or else you get a bunch of uh, oxides forming on the top of it. As you can see that little heat line off the beads is about an inch away from it there. And that right there tells me it's getting a little bit hotter than I'm wanting it to. By strike up again, a couple more beads. Doing the same, uh, whip into the edge and back and adding film right as I whip back into the puddle. And I'm lifting up as I add the film metal so that way the film motor doesn't touch my tungsten. I whip out making uh, sure I maintain gas shielding at the edge. This is actually the way I learned to weld with TIG at the school I went to. That's uh, all we got to work on for doing steel and stainless is they just let us use scratch start rigs but when we got to aluminum they, they let us use a uh, it was a big miller with a foot pedal for aluminum. As you can see, I'm just welding along. As you can see how much that heat, heat, the blue ring for the heat is getting away from my bead. So you can tell it's getting very hot and it's staying hot longer. So what I do here is I shut off my gas and I went and cooled off the metal. Just my amperage down some and I came back. Got the gas valve opened up again, and here, it 
didn't really want to strike because I guess the lower amperage. But once I got it struck, it welded pretty decent. So just welding along, doing the same dab technique again. As you can see, the, the it wasn't as wide of a bead and was a lot more controllable. Now scratch start rigs are used a lot in sanitary work or and they're used a lot on machines where you can't like if you're welding on a car with a TIG you can't use a high frequency machine or so it'll mess up some of the electronics in the car so that's where a scratch start comes in handy and here I show another method of striking with striking with the electrode the fill metal itself across the electrode And then just adding the, there's another method of running where you just add the film as you run the torch across. But you gotta keep that film metal in the gas shielding at all times after it strikes an arc. Here I tried to do a little bit of a float, which didn't really work right. I had my amperage way too high for a float. I tried to go and I cut it back to right around 110 amps. After I did this bead. And this method is a float method where you hover the torch over where you're running a bead and you move side to side to spread the fill metal out. And it's just a different style of TIG welding. And I'm also doing lay wire technique where I keep the fill metal down in the weld instead of dabbing it, I just keep it in there and just run over the top of it with the TIG torch. At the end of this video, I'm gonna show pictures of all the welds. So that way y'all can see what each individual style causes the weld to come out like. My preferred method is how I was taught in school, which is to walk the cup and I'll show that at the end to do that it really is a little bit difficult to start on the edge of the plate you have to float it for, for about the first I'd say about the first three quarters to an inch of the weld and as you see I'm just holding the fill metal in there moving the torch back and forth back and forth side to side while I move this uh, torch across and I maintain shielding at the end I came back I'm doing another bead right here just floating it across again just 
letting it wet, up, wet out at the edges. Keeping that fill metal in there, doing the lay wire. Whip out. I didn't really shield that one. I want to show you how that looks when you don't shield it. You can see how the bead before it got that black edge along it. That's from it not having adequate shielding as the metal cooled. Now I'm going to take the clamp off and reposition the clamp so it won't be in the way as we do our walk to cup. Get that positioned and with walking the cup you basically, as you can see, you'll set the edge of the cup down on the workpiece and what I prefer to do instead of striking it with the tungsten, I prefer to do it with striking with the filler metal across the tungsten. walk it back and forth, you will have a figure eight pattern, and you hold each edge, and it's just like walking a 55 gallon drum across like a, when you try to walk it, it's about the same method as moving one of those. You just set it on its edge and just walk it back and forth. Get to the edge and I'll whip out. And that'll be it for the welding on this video. I'll uh, share out some more on each style and future videos to come. I'll do some uh, joints with it also. I'll do joints in different ways showing the different methods for TIG welding. So I hope you all stay tuned for that and don't forget to keep on welding folks. Hey, if you like this video, like, comment, and subscribe, and click the little bell icon to be notified of our future videos. Tig Tuesday episodes come out every Tuesday, and my stick loan series is going to come out every Saturday. So stay tuned.